saw last time Lost Province was a lot of Karath into a rush, and this time is gonna be no different. And will they go for the same type of thing? Yeah, okay, it's ex okay. Hmm. Drago undecided between Ajari and Orzum. We've seen. Do you want a complete okay. repeat? Do you want double Orzum? Well, early was uh, Orzum Ajari, right? This time it's double Orzum. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, Drago still. Either undecided. way, either way, it was you know Zoo and Drago going for extremely early double Legion Hall, pushing in hard, but not finding a whole lot of damage. So maybe it, it seems. Yeah, it's not oh. hedge. So, Drago and Zoo set up a tower last time, trying to hold the line, but that's more advantage for Zentari. Mm. So, Zoo and Drago go for this again. They're going to need to hold... They're going to need to grab that hallowed ground, but it's going to give them far more power than it did in the last game, just with that extra range attack. And we are seeing the early Legion Hall, so... Zoo and Drago having the same thought. as and Go for looking... the same build as last time. See what they can repeat. Like you said. Yeah, this. Well, Pigeon and Santa are also going for double Aether as well. So this is pretty much a repeat of last time on Pigeon and Santa side. That makes sense, right? They won the first game with this strategy. So now they're going for it again after, well, losing the first one to it. And they scout right away to Proxy Legion Hall and yep. they'll be quite happy about that. They want they want to see it as fast as possible. They want to know what's going on. The other problem, of course, the thing to, get, thing to keep an eye on is if Santa or Pigeon go for a Proxy Soul Foundry. That was the big thing that distracted Zoo last game. And then from there, led to the army splitting up for Team Fire, leading to the win for Team Ice. Yeah, they will have the Aether pretty soon to get that Soul Foundry. And yeah, as you said, the question is, where will they place it? Do they want their opponents scout immediately, like in base? Just means your reinforcements come that much later, but at least you'll be safe from any attack because the Absolvers will just come in and defend everything. That's the question, well, though. Do they want to defend against the attack? Or do they want to go for... Oh, Zoo going for the early and very proxied Soul Foundry themselves. Hmm. We haven't even seen Santa or Pigeon go for their Soul Foundry yet. Yeah, Drago oh, it's not is outside. about to go. Pigeon, Pigeon and Santa going for inside. They want to hold. They just want defense. They are not I'm going to risk the forward, the forward Soul Foundry the way they did last time. And I, I don't mean, this is them. a smart play, right? Yeah, yeah no, I mean they they defend. barely survived the last time with the distraction of the Absolvers, and that's assuming that Zoo <laughs> falls for it again, which you can't assume. Zoo so probably a, learn their lesson. Yeah, this is a huge advantage for the defenders in general. Just, well, I'd usually say you have defenders advantage by having faster units. You won't have that this time, but you do have tower advantage, meaning a healing spot to go back to. And if you're in too much trouble, you also have the moats to pull back, which have a lot more HP than you used to. There's a few advantages here. Drago not going for a soul foundry of his own proxy at the very least. Or, but Zoo's absorbers they are about to come not. out, and that'll make a difference. No, Drago's... Oh. Drago's Reliquary. saving up. Yeah, He's going, going for Reliquary. Okay. So, let's either go for healing or go for ranged. Yeah, Honestly, it kind of makes sense to go for ranged. Yeah. Ma With the Magi, Magi could be a big difference to help well, right? out. Get that. Yeah, if they get the Hallowed Ground, that gives Antari plenty of room to work with. So that would be amazing for Team Fire, allowing them to push forward the way they couldn't in the first game. Still, these his Absolvers coming up here are going to be difficult for Team Fire to snipe. And P Pigeon and Santa going for this round, sniping out one of Zeus' Absolvers. Second one is heavily threatened. Nothing there to save it. Loses some Sapari, but not. it's not worth it. Pigeon and Santa have the defense set up. Zoo and Draco have got to find some way to work from this. Draco going for the Z Zephyrs instead. Going for the damage type advantage to snipe out the Absolvers from range. Yeah, the tower is lost. And at this point, the position is completely won by Ice. Uh, Fire want to hold the, uh, the the low ground just because they don't want to lose those uh, very expensive production buildings. But Sand and Pigeon won't let that happen. They also go for a proxy ward, and, and here comes the push down. Fire is doing their best survive, but at this point, these buildings it's, are pretty much forfeit. It's too doing much. Their best. It is too much. Sand and Pigeon able to wipe out this proxy. Same time proxying their own for wardens. So there is nothing Zoo and Drago really have to work with other than at least at the front. They have this hill here, which is okay, but it's not really set up. If Pigeon and Santa keep going, they can just... They can wipe it. And they are wipe going... The... Oof, the oh, Absolver at the back dealing heavy damage. You need to be coordinated if you want to take this out. But yeah, Pigeon... as well, you don't really need to take it out. You can go around, which is... That's uh... true. Which Pigeon is going for. Yep. Uh, Drago, though, with the range advantage, the Zephyrs can be very useful in this situation. Just poke and head back. 
uh, two support especially, won't be able to deal with this. Yeah, especially if Drago decides to upgrade Windstep on these Zephyrs, then those Absolvers stand no chance. Zephyrs just teleport in and take them out. Which means Drago could very well be able to force Pigeon and Santa into completely different tech. But yeah. little do they know, the they already have. Yeah, Warden's already in the back of, of Zoo's base, dealing a bit of damage in the in the position. Yeah, no more moats mining, just a Bastion. Of course, Bastion is a decent amount of mining, but you want more than that. Uh, fire both, both expanding, and will they be able to defend this push? The push is coming, it's coming in strong. That's a lot of Absolvers, even the Dervish to help deal with those light units. We're in the back. The tower right. helps immensely with the defense, but is it It does, enough? but Pigeon, Pigeon and Sand, they just needed to get rid of... Honestly, this Legion all goes, that's already a huge win. And, and so far, taking out some heavy damage to the units. Having to deal with the Rook of Iron, but not for long. Again, yeah, the front up. line is, going, is doomed. Sand and Pigeon getting the value they need off of this push. Heaven's Age is dealing so, helping oh, so much here, but Zoo going for the counterattack. Yeah, the counterattack off of that for. hill that did leave them open. So now it comes down to a bit of a base race. The defenses are in Pigeon and Santa's base. They can set up a few more resolvers to hold this off. Losing the natural is going to only be a problem if they don't take their own, and they do. Deliver from Evil does save it right at the right time as well. Pigeon and Santa might have their cake and eat it too. The resolvers able to come back around. Pigeon losing their own natural, but able to defend Santa's. The advantage goes to Team Ice once again economically. And why the, not leave yeah, a contingent in everyone's base? That was always the big advantage for, for Ice, right? Having the Jari and Deliver from Evil. In the base trade scenario, you can destroy a base and then just recall in time to save everything. Losing the Absolver there is expensive, so good trade for Zoo, but it might not be enough. We'll see where do you go from here. What's the next step? Keeping this position is very powerful. Especially as it keeps that Legion Hall alive as well. I mean, this position saves Zoo. If Zoo did yeah. not have this position, then Pigeon and Santa would have just completely steamrolled. Yep. It's this like, this game would have been over. Because yeah, Zoo has two production structures left. Is that it? They have that Legion Hall. They have this Legion Hall. Yep. Yeah, they're it. pretty. They're pretty sparse. They're they're in trouble. Granted, so is Drago, but Drago yeah. has managed to rebuild them and. Zoo is being much slower on that front. Zoo, they cannot build more units at the moment. This yeah. is this is their army. For the time being, everything that Zoo can possibly make is right in front of us. My biggest and issue San and this, Pitcher, yeah. My big issue with this army is the lack of anti-air. We did see Wardens at this point, and unless Rayo comes in to save the day, but the Wardens might not even be necessary at this point. Uh, that's a really big army from Team Ice, and oh, okay, they're just going around, or are they ready to push through? Oh, if. Oh, the Absolver's not set up. They can totally push this. Drop oh, Heaven's Ages coming in. Pigeon, Pigeon and Santa, they've committed. They got the snipe. There is nothing stopping them. The tower is the main threat, and that's not even really a problem. Empire Broken is not going to be enough. The rest of the forces are being distracted by these darn near invincible Zapari. Tower goes down. Legion Hall will soon follow. And now, conveniently enough, Pigeon and Santa have a nice little area to put their own tower, should they so choose. Ah, no, they're killing it. They say, my opponent used this. I can't use this, too. And they're going to go down with... Oh, no, they keep it alive. Just barely. Oh, they, no, it's gone. It's gone. Oh. You can use those, by the way. Like, if your opponent says I'm in a bad spot... Man, I'm... But speaking of bad spots, that is exactly the position that Zoo and Drago are in. They have the high ground. They don't really have the units. Drago trying to save the day with Zephyrs. But the leapfrogging Absolvers from Sand and Pigeon Wrench are providing too much resistance. Wiping out one Zantari after another, keeping Zoo and Drago under pressure. Pigeon Wrench using the opening to move in. Find a position. Will get surrounded. The god of really relying on oh, Absolver splash damage surround. here. This surround could hold them off. Pigeon and Santa cannot advance further at the moment. Zoo yeah. already going for a hidden expansion on top of this. So slight hope is there for Team Fire. But Team Ice maintaining a significant advantage militarily. It really comes down right now. The Absolvers are more powerful, but those Zephyrs have so much have so much mobility. They can just jump in, kill a unit, then jump out without losing anything. And there we go. They're doing it again. Kill two Absolvers from the get go. Ooh, barely, Ooh. Does it get alive? No, there's no. the wind step. No, they they go for it. Yep. Not, great counterattack from Zoo, but you don't want to lose those fours entire. You need to run back before the units come back because that's 400 ally that he can't afford to lose now. And okay, there we go. He's going back home. No, one goes down. One down. Oof. Twenty percent of their army just died. Well, we can say that, but he did kill a lot of moats there. He, he. They you did. Gotta, you don't. You got to do some damage, right? You can't. Uh, you can't just stay passive the whole time. You. 
force your opponent back. They're not attacking you, so... Yeah, they're relying entirely on Drago's force at this point. Like, that... That... This is Team Fire's army, is all these efforts, because... Zoo does not have anything. Drago has stuff. Zoo is starting to rebuild a little bit. So, credit to them. They're not stuck. But they've been so behind for so long that it's been... It's given Pitcher Ranch and Santa time to expand everywhere. I do like this, uh, this, this composition from Drago. We used to see it a lot in the latest patch. It's coming back a bit with Drago using using the Zephyrs and the Magi to heal them up. So the attack is never ending. As long as you find your opponent out of position, you can do so Which much damage Which they do! Oh. Zoo with the tower in their opponent's main base, getting a staging ground to start wiping out the base directly. This leading to a bit of a surround coming in here. Zephyr's forced to retreat. Drago able to save their army reasonably well. It's under... It's split out from the force, so Zoo will not have reinforcements on their little push over to the main bases of Sand and Pigeon. Yeah, this point it's really hard to run back as the Sapari are pretty quick and they can and they can jump in on those Zephyrs. Zephyrs need to find a defensive position and they go with that tower. Hopefully it's enough getting a bit more power. The Empire Unbroken comes out of Rook of Ira, dealing a lot of damage, but the Heaven's Age is healing all those, stopping a lot of damage from going through. Uh, that is enough. Only losing one Sapari in the process. Pigeon and Santa continuing this push with no issue. Zoo wants to save the day, they just don't have the forces to do it. Drago's the only one who can hold this, and Drago is already forced to retreat. Going for snipes, those... though. Pigeon and Santa, once again, being stymied by this bridge. Going for the bait, and they get it! Zoo falls for it! Pigeon Wrench able to get the surround, wipe out, rip out most of Zoo's army. That opens them up to push in, but Drago already ready on the defense. Yeah, the few absorbers here are perfect to have as a backline for those Zephyrs. Zephyrs can now go back to going in and out, but oh, the tower did go up. The tower went up. Does Centauri have a place to retreat to? And the absolvers, well, you don't want to fight absolvers with nothing. Of course, the warden helping defend this. Uh, they don't shoot up, right? The, the they Zentari don't shoot up. Zentauri do not shoot up. Had to find one disadvantage for them. You'd think that they could just shoot their blades at the air, but no, they're not good enough for that. I mean, maybe they're really heavy. Well, like, the range be. isn't that big. Maybe the energy is just actually really heavy. And mm. it becomes hard to actually... Like, they just they just can't go high enough. Like, they, they throw it, and then it comes back down, and then just lands ineffectually in the ground somewhere. Yeah, and it could finally like, fall on your, on your ally's face, right? You don't want to do that. Yeah, exactly. It's like lawn darts. Mm. You have stories about lawn darts that we should know about? Nothing bad. I mean, I've played it. it no one got hurt. Hmm. Yeah, I played. Yeah. A, we played it properly, so. Oh, okay. You know. Oh, boring. Oh, yeah, you no, know, it wasn't. Way, right? It wasn't playing. We weren't playing catch with lawn darts, which is the problem. Yeah, that is that is a big issue. You know, why would you play without playing catch with it? Well, I was. I wanted to keep your eyes, I guess. Well, yeah, I, guess I know. Cool. I know. I I had a head full of eyeballs and wanted to keep it that way. Mm. I still do. So you know, it worked. It wasn't very brave though. No, th that's the issue, right? You gotta be brave, and those three Centauri are very brave trying to defend this position with the Rook of Ira. Rook of Ira, very powerful, but not quite enough as a... Doesn't keep the units alive, it just does more damage, it just does splash damage. Oh, it kept but the Citadel it... alive for an extra five seconds. A little seconds bit, and... a little bit. That, I don't know, oh. killed one Centauri, one Sapari or two, maybe? Like, Pigeon and Santa have overwhelming tech advantage right now. They have a significant army lead. Drago is the like again. Drago is the only player on Team Fire that's in a position to hold the line. And Pigeon Santa this time around on the harassment have learned their lesson. Only going for a small strike force to take out the expansion, rather than going for the entire arm, both armies, to break it. Granted, this is only going to lead to a dead moat line, but a dead moat line is still that much more ahead that Pigeon Ranch and Santa find themselves. Yeah, the the moat gain though extra HP really helps in defending those type of things, but. Uh, you know, you still had a few Zephyrs as well to help out, and all of those go down. It's expensive, and Drago of the Pillar of the Heavens with the help defend that position. Defensive Pillar. Defensive Pillar on the high ground. Uh, they do have... Or past the high ground, rather, which means that is not going to... Go, that's not going to fall anytime soon. Good timing for them, too, with the alloy only being built up behind it. The Sand and Pigeon... They have the economic advantage, but Zoo and Drago, they're playing it. If they play this smart, they could get themselves back into this game. It's all about the engagement at this point. They both have very powerful armies, very different compositions, but if they are able to get the right engagement, get most of the kills where the opponents doesn't get much, 
Uh, you can come out really ahead, and Zephyrs are perfect for that type of hit and run compositions, right? You can just come in, snipe your unit, go back, and lose absolutely nothing, and snipe really expensive units. Uh, but Ice doesn't want to hear about it. They saw their opponent was out of position with Drago on the left side entirely. Uh, they're coming in strong. No third, but the bases over to the northeast are compl are very vulnerable, and they can split out Zoo's army, cutting their opponent in half. Oh no, Zoo's all Dra alone. Zoo, Zoo is all, all alone. alone. Zoo has nothing to support them. Drago on the other side of the map, so Zoo desperately trying to hold the line on their own, but this base is doomed. Their forces may be doomed. Santa Claus going for the flank, able to catch out these Antari. Not able to surround them completely. Pigeon Wrench, once again with the Strike Force, over to try to take out more moats. The rest of the force is looking to keep Zoo from dealing too much damage. Drago has not yet regrouped, but Zoo in the back lines. Again. Some damage they can find. Yeah, again. Arc Mutters. Oh, Arc Mutters are powerful. If you're able to set them up, but can you get one? Okay, one Arc Mutter goes down. Expensive loss. Second one. Dancing around the Soul Foundry. Dancing around. Never stop dancing and you might survive. And, and the pillar dancing. as well. Oh, no. It's oh, no. No. You needed to keep dancing. Oh, Drago is able to get in at the same time. Surrounding Pitchwrench's forces. Cutting them down. Zolver's trying to get out of there, but Pitchwrench cannot save anything. The rest of the forces were at least outside of that fight, but so much was lost. Drago taking on expan two expansions for three expansions at this point. If this one falls down as well. Yeah, Drago so, doesn't Drago doesn't think he can do it. Going for the Efers instead, but Pigeon is chasing Drago down. Same time that lets Drago get a bit more time to take care of this base. Pigeon going for this round, wants to catch it out of position. Santa coming in back in. Of course at this point, it might just be an economy game. Santa still has a Wait, no, Santa doesn't have economy either. No one does. They have... They just got an ally only. Okay, that's fair so enough. they do have point. that. And the natural has not caught mind out yet, so there is still some hope. And it's worth noting, Team Ice did take out basically everything Team Fire had outside of the main base. Yeah, Drago like, so just has an ally only. Jake yeah, in about a him. minute, in about a minute, they're going to be out of ether and very close to out of alloy. Well, he does have that tiller resistance front, and the throne goes down. They oh, do. Does it? Does it? Oh, it survives. Good so mind. This, pull back. this all comes down to whether Drago can hold the line and wipe out enough of Team Ice's army to keep themselves alive in the meantime. Team Ice plays this patient and careful. They have the economy well on their side. And that was just such a great engagement from Drago again, just forcing his opponent to jump into his seven absolvers. That's not a fight you want to take ever, especially when you're under the pillar. <laughs> you know what? Uh, when you're going to attack like a minigun. Nope. When you can attack like a minigun, then you put it under a pillar. It just attacks like a fast minigun. I'm going to need a better one like than that. Like two miniguns. Oh, there we go. But in one minigun. Oh, yeah, exactly. Double minigun. Like every minigun has two bullets in. So that like you don't do Maternal faster. where you have that minigun that splits out into four miniguns? Yeah, yeah that's how like it works. That. Yeah, that's what those arms are. Pretty much. So that's that at least buys Team Fire a little bit of time. But oh, Team Ice, again, they took out the economy. They, they've decided just go along the north side. Try well, to find opening that way. Look what Santa was doing. He was using the ability of the Ark Mutters to heal his units with Ajaris. Wasn't that great? Like oh, that's right. Yeah, because Ajari, because the hall way the Hall of Ground works for Ajari, their units heal up if once they enter it. Yeah, exactly. So as soon as the Ark Mutters stabilize to get their Hall of Ground, then start healing. Almost never seen that. I'm so Smart excited Santa Claus. <laughs> that is a new change. So Santa Claus being very... Clever adapting to some of the new immortal abilities as we have not seen them practice in a jar, but they must have clearly. Anyway, pillar come down for Drago, a second pillar to hold this line. It may not matter as Team I simply doesn't have to engage the pillar. They're on the other side. Like, they're on the wrong side of the pillar for Team Fire. Yeah, so Dr Drago needs to be careful not to engage too powerfully into this. There's still a lot of absolvers. And, well, okay, Halwars at least from the back will help a lot. The Ark Mutter dealing, dishing forward to attack. The two Rooks are there to help defend this push. And how powerful are two Rooks? Is Even it enough? With, not enough! Even with all the extra health and yet more Empire and Broken comes in. Both players dropping Empire and Broken. Second one does force a retreat. Oh my god, the two Rooks were enough. The two Rooks were enough to defend this and Ice is forced to retreat. And on the retreat, they're getting attacked and jumped on by Drago. Hold, is Drago now doing holding this? the high ground. They're holding the high ground, but the throne goes! That the throne, they lose mostly everything. Zolver's just doing everything they can. Valiant last stand. A couple more throws coming from Pigeon Ranch to help out, but this is a last stand for Team Ice's main army. Drago and Zoo have a counterattack opportunity fresh and open for them. 
Ice were in such a good position this whole game, but now Dragons, you have the bigger army. And that's it. That's it. Santa calls the GGs. Santa and Pigeon are out after being ahead for almost the entire game. Drago and Zoo come out with the victory here. Just didn't even want to wait for the counterattack. Just went. Nope. Nope. We're. Nope. 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 That was. That was the. the that was the, the idea there. My like. I cannot believe that. Honestly, that. Was not what I expected. Like, yeah, okay, they lost a few units to the towers, but yeah, the double, the double, double rook completely yeah. messed them. Like, yeah, that mean, first double rook was fine. They could hold that, they could break the towers. They almost had that one tower down. But the yeah. second double rook, cutting the, their army in half, leading them to terrible position. And, I mean, high ground, it's tempting to hold the, hold the line on high ground, and often it works, but the forces were just too numerous. The thrones being gone just did not, like, they didn't have the firepower to hold off Team Fire's force. Well, oh, what a great way to come back from this. Drago did a great job with his uh, Zephyrs coming back in and getting everything out. And yeah, the Zephyrs getting the damage that the opponents were not able to get out of it. Pulling back from the edge. Uh, it seemed like it was a dead game for them, but just uh, just surviving from the edge of, from very little. Very, very solid use of Orzum abilities by team by by Zoo and Drago. Yep. Well, next map will be embargo. That will be a fun map. Another map that you can defend pretty well if you go for Orzum. Oh, we saw that well the double rooks the double rooks really helped defend that push. Oof. And yeah. Man, don't jump into double double uh, double rook of Ira. Yeah, if you do that, you are going to be in trouble. Mm. Well, anyways, the score right now, 3-1 for Drago and Zoo. Santa and Pigeon got the first game, but of course it's 3-1. There is There is a way back, right? It's not a... Uh... There is. It's possible for Pigeon and Santa to go for reverse sweep here. And they did pick Embargo. They did want to go in Embargo. So what do they have planned for Embargo? So last time, like you said, Orzum was doing a lot of defense. Pigeon and Santa went heavy on the Aru last time, and... Well, if they do that this time, they have a chance to redeem themselves. If not, they have a completely different strategy up their sleeve. No. A pigeon heading for Orzum and Zoo heading for Orzum. Well, Zoo's been playing Orzum the whole time. He, oh, yeah. He did mention Zoo's... he just wants to practice one immortal and get really good at that one. Yeah, which they were playing a bunch during the tournament, too. Like, yep. during last week's Immortal Trials, they were playing Orzum, and they were being very, 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 very defensive. They're the... Or proxies. Yeah. Or proxies. <laughs> or proxies, but oftentimes they're being defensive to the point that we had a timeout rule that we ended up reinstating because that was becoming a bit of a problem. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember. This was a... Uh... Well, the tournament ended seven hours later, and it was a fun one, but went a bit further than we expected. It was, yeah. It Just was... went a bit longer. <laughs> I mean, it only added like an hour with the delays. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We thought it would be six. It's like 24 players in an RTS tournament is going to take six hours. Yep. Yeah. Just how the math works. Yeah, especially with a best of three in the lower bracket. We should have gone best yes. of five in the upper bracket, you know? Just keep it... Uh, no, probably not. Did you want to sleep? I mean, I, I stopped before the finals, you know? I was, I was done. I was like, ah, oh, six hours. Oh, I'm that's good. true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. I was kind of lucky because I was part... I was the second half, so I didn't have to do all of it. Exactly. I had in Trashman handling the first half, so there were at least... Yeah, no, a bit a great more break. They did a great job for their first time as well, like... Like, they knew a lot about Immortals, so I was really happy about that. Well, Zara did a good job teaching them. Oh, that too. Yeah. But, I mean, they obviously were in invested enough to learn, so that yeah, that exactly. I appreciate. And here but comes... they are not playing right now, and of the people who are playing, Santa is going full-on wipe out all the towers with moats. It's a quite I a little I've started seeing here. that a bit more. Well, you yeah, can. Is it worth it? They're not going to fight yeah, back, so you might as well. Yeah, you get that extra 30 power in exchange for some alloy, so you lose a bit of your economy at the start, which will slow down everything, but you get that power. You don't even need those power camps anymore, right? You just get the power from there, and then go for More whatever strategy you want. deny it to your opponent, which is going to matter a great deal, as once again, we see Zoo going for this upfront strategy, and as I saw last time, the they just need to use that to get a natural expansion down. Uh, that early damage is more than enough to catapult them into a lead. Yeah. And this time, yeah, it's it's just a full-on eco build from uh, Pigeon and Santa. 
Getting that early front, fat Legion Hall at the front is good for the Hallowed Ground. It helps defend every single push from Pigeon and Santa. Who did go for double Orzum this time? So, can be very defensive. They decide to go for that. And if they do that, that's going to... That's going to be a great setup. I mean, from there, they get their tower set up. They start getting more power from there. They get tower foundation as well, because why not? Just to defend this high ground. Just, they... They're concerned. Dragoon Zoo might come up this hill. Yep. Not an unfair concern, though it is the case that Zoo and Drago, they're once again going from the middle of the map. They don't care to go sneak you right yet. No, zero, zero sneak is from them, but yeah, no expansion at the back. Do they have one expansion from Drago, right? Drago did take his yep. expansion? No? Drago yeah. just, I mean, it's a late expansion. Both Zoo and, Zoo and Drago investing heavily in trying to take out their opponents quickly. Patronage does catch out the Absolvers, doesn't go for the kill, even though they weren't deployed. That leaves Zoo all the room in the world to take out these rocks. Patronage and Santa waiting on the high ground for the inevitable attack. They need to are kill anything ready. either. Yeah, Pigeon and Santa not going for any Absolvers either, so just taking out the high ground here. Going for, okay, Dervish and One Absolvers, absolver. there we go. Yeah. Yeah, just enough to help defend. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you can't push up this hill. Even with the no. Absolvers, you're going into Zentari oh, with no. the towers. Oh, no, 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 no. Losing a Zentari for free. Zoo yeah, knows no this is not the... This is not the way? Well, okay, they... I think they know this is not the way. Do they, do they know it's not the way? Because it's not the way. Whether or not they He's know it's not the way, way, it's not the way. He's looking for the other way. And uh, Drake also looking for the other way. But the tower is about oh. to be done for Santa. And that will be very Santa hard to thought push ahead. Through. Oh yeah, Santa did say this game, he is going completely defensive as that is the way to do with Orzum. And that is his toolkit, right? Going for those towers and playing extremely defensive. Drago's counterattack won't do much. Of course, what you can do if someone plays extra defensive like that is go for a lot of expansions. We're not going for it quite yet. Ooh, the four of No, not when you consider how... Yeah, no, this is... This is saved by the Warden right now. He has the high ground vision, Ooh. gets the extra damage. And nothing is up to actually shoot up. Sentinels are on the way for Santa Claus, but that's not going to be in time as the Hallow Ground getting cut back by losing this Legion Hall means that's just that much easier to get the high ground. The Absolvers get the high ground, there is very little to stop them. To be fair though, Zoo has no expansion coming from... Oh, he's, he's finally No, they don't. Expansion. They this, don't. This is... So he needs to do some damage. They, so far, no, this has been... Hall? That's been the win condition. The fact that Pidge Ranch and Santa have been able to hold the line as well as they have has put a really cramp in Zoo's style. Yep. Like Zoo, Zoo, like I said, really needed that extra, that early damage. They have not found it. Yeah, they, they killed the Legion Hall, which is not nothing. But when your opponent has an extra base on you, it's pretty close to nothing. It's uh, it doesn't equalize well. Of course, there comes the the Wardens and Drago doing their own damage, killing that first Apostle of Binding to stop the Ether flow from going into Pigeon. That's a decent early start, and here comes Sentinel. No, he'll have to run. Yeah, still but he already two Ether, two Ether. That's that's a trade. If they save... Oh, no, one of the ones go down. Okay. It's not bad no. trade entirely for Pigeon and Santa, but they're more concerned about the contain. Yeah, like, how do they break out? How do they get themselves around the map? As Drago has started to expand, like, this is starting to become Team Fire's game with the economy they're building up behind all of this. Yep. Well, it can come down to the big army, right? If you're able to build a bigger death ball on your opponent, Embargo is kind of a straightforward map. The rest of the... The rush distance is very close between two bases. Uh, so if you're able to just make a straight line and kill your opponent's bases, you can win that way. As there aren't as many paths to go around. I'm about to say Lost Province or Fool's Bay. At least. Yeah, no, those the Lost Province and Fool's Bay definitely require a lot more finagling around choke points. Oh, there you go. The second tower there. Drago and it Zoo want to time. This. Yep, they want to defend yeah. this position. Same time, getting more Wardens back in. They don't... Oh, they just got the run sentinel. Yeah, so they don't care because they're defended. Pigeon wrench, are you going for this? This is this is risky. Like this is the position Zoo and Drago want you to go into to take out all your forces. That defense is barely the warden comes in. And oh wow, even going for a citadel at the main. Okay, seems very pyre expensive to do that. In my yeah, mind, yeah, it's hundred. That's that's half a pillar right there. Yeah, it's a uh, hundred fire just from the get go, and the absolvers are really well sieged up. Well, pigeons aren't. First one goes down. Uh, units try to defend as well as they can. Absolvers at the back. Okay, the scepter is able to do damage. Without the scepter's getting the only hope. Scepter's the only hope for Santa right now. 
<laughs> Warden coming to do the, the job as opponent as well. Oh wait, it's no okay, it is Dragos. It is Dragos. But San just just looking at it menacingly. Yeah, Sandals Otherwise here. defending everything. <laughs> Citadel going up. Well, Citadel going down now go goes back up again. Yeah. And in any event, Pitchrunch and Santa have been able to hold their little bit of territory while Zoo and Drago they have about half the map to their name. I, I do love that Drago takes the bottom right one. Is it usually goes to your opponent, and taking it that early means if the game goes really, really long, they won't be able to mine out of that one because Drago will have taken it. Of course, that's a bad as a bit of a big if. Zoo oh, looking to force the issue. The scepter so well placed right now, getting that AOE on the absolvers. Absolvers one and two going down at the same time. Absolvers from Santa Claus well placed to deal this damage, but is it enough? As they come in, Warden is dealing damage, but the Warden's getting shooed away by those Sentinels, and Nice holds this position. For yeah. now. Pigeon, at least. Pigeon Wrench. The whole Santa's with Sentinels and Dur Zephyrs coming through just well enough. Pigeon Wrench as well with the Zephyrs. They can. Are they going for it? This is. This is far too risky to go for. Pigeon Wrench, do not do that. Like, you're, you're Orzim. You slow push around the map. You still have the opening to the top. You can still take some, some more territory that way. I'm liking this for ice so far to expanding really want the north part of the map instead of often we see like a bit of division a diagonal division but here they're really going for the north part uh slowly but surely expanding their territory which and is, on the class uh, game they have the pyre camp available too oh yeah like they Always they lost them. access to their pyre camp pretty early on last time on embargo indeed they did okay slow pushing from zoo Oh, okay. Drago finding a place where he can attack the tower, but the Howlers are coming out, and the Howler... Yeah, Drago does not have a lot of room to work with your Pigeon Wrench. Coming with this round, taking out a few of the Zephyrs. Three Zephyr kills, four Pigeon Wrench. A little bit of a reprieve from the constant pressure that Team Fire has been applying. It kind of takes the damage where he can do it. And what we're looking at the army value, Santa is slowly but surely building up his army. He's at close to 5,000, where his opponents are still close to 3,000 each. Uh, if he can keep building up in that sense, that will be a good advantage. Howlers are great in this position as they're the only thing that outrange everything can do free damage while receiving nothing. Yeah, Howlers, especially against the towers, but we've seen already the towers are the main strategy here. If they go down, Howlers will be Santa Claus and Pigeon's ticket into this game. If they can take out those towers, which that's becoming a big, bigger and bigger rift. Drago moving in, Zoo with their own Howlers on top of this. Uh, it's... Ooh. The power ancient remains Zephyr. for Team Fire as they get the Ancient Construct. Now they're in a perfect position for it. It's going to be very hard for Ice, especially with the two towers already up for Zoo. Attacking into that will be really hard, and yeah, they're not even going to try. It seems like they're... Of course, the first Ancient is only 50 power per player. The second one, though, is 100... No, it's 75, the second yes. one. Yes, yeah, it pops up by 50 every time. Or 50 total every time. So you're right, yeah, 75 each, and then... But even that, like... Just the fact that there's not a whole lot of pyre on this map means losing the Ancient is a huge pyre swing in your favor. And considering how dependent Pigeon Rush and Santa's strategy is on just setting up those towers, this is a problem which Zoo and Drago intend to capitalize on. But Santa has been able to push them back once again. The Hallowers finding loads of value off that. Yeah, Hallower and Absolver just sitting at the back, keeping... Well, keeping their position as they're both expanding very slowly but surely on the north side. Uh, Dragon and Zoo taking expansion of their own so they can keep up their opponent. But right now, they're not really keeping up. Their opponents are up on the army value by quite a margin. That's, like, as always, Drago. Drago being the army here. It's the first time we've seen Team Ice actually have an advantage in that, in that department. But, you know, it's... Drago is the military-industrial complex of Team Fire. <laughs> it's... It's been proven time and time again. Yeah, well, that's what happens when Zoo goes for that very early proxies and try to do the damage. You don't get any. Your economy's behind. And it's just hard to catch up from there. He's slowly but surely trying to get back into it, but then losing a base here will push him back once more. Like you said, it doesn't have much of an economy. does have yeah. three bases, so it's not like they're that far behind. Yeah, needs to get all his E first. Needs to get all everything mining. Here comes a nice little counterattack from Pigeon, but Drago sees it coming from afar. Re uh, just replaces his units away. Is that going to lead to a distraction, though? 
Like, yeah, it's going to be caught out, but now it's just a little bit less defending these towers, a little bit more room for, say, these howlers to come and start taking out everything that's been built up a front. Yeah, they got one tower Sa already. And yeah, Sa the Santa one. Pigeon, if they can take out this front tower, they have they can start threatening this base in the southeast, put Drago on the back foot. And yeah, there's nothing really... Yeah, there's nothing really to deal with those howlers quite yet. You can if you go to those higher tech units, the thrones and... and uh, Sharu? Sharu can, yeah, Sharu can deal pretty well with them, but as those are not out, you can try jumping on them, but the Absolvers and the big army of his opponents are already there. Oh no, Zoo the Howler's moving careful. way too close. Zoo getting far too aggressive. And it's losing them most of their army here as the tower remains under threat. Temps from mm -hmm. Drago to come around and flank are stymied by Santa Claus' use of pyre. Now this tower once again under heavy fire. Santa being a little too forward themselves. Want to be in a safe spot to take out that tower. But if that's gone, that is an opening. That is room for Pigeon and Santa coming. Pigeon going for the first tower. Only one remains. Getting the surround on all of Zoo's army. This falls. There is not much stopping Zoo and Pigeon, or Pigeon Ranch and Santa Claus. They have a massive advantage in the army. They have this frontline base destroyed. The tower is gone. The army's gone. The production is gone. Zoo and Drago are broken in tatters across the map. And Drago tried to go for a counterattack, kill one base, and now can try and head for the other one. But there's another tower there. Santa does not have the power for an Empire Unbroken. But Pigeon uh, but does. Pigeon, Pigeon can if he wants to. Uh, but he might be too concentrated on the fight as they are still pushing forward. Want to go for the natural. And at this, least is one this is a base race. This is a base race that Team Ice will win. Oh, yeah, by far. There's almost nothing for Drago. There's too many towers here. Even a second Citadel, a bit lower back. It takes so long to kill. It takes so much time to kill. You need to kill it. You can't just let it survive this whole time. Thrones coming in from Drago. Uh, but there's five Castigators. Those Thrones will be orphaned yeah. almost Pig immediately. Pigeon and Santa were well prepared with anti-air for this. And that is no tech for Drago as their base is overwhelmed by Pigeon and Santa coming in here. Taking out production after production structure, tech after tech, base after base. And only the two side bases will remain after this push. With nothing left to defend them either. Drago getting rid of that third, but still losing. They're just under heavy attrition inside of their opponent's base. While Pigeon and Santa are facing no resistance whatsoever. At this point, I'm not too sure what Fire can do. Zoo still roaming around the map on the north side. He killed Pigeon's base. Another tower here in the throne. That he has one casket in his hand here, which... You know, is enough to take care of something. that from. <laughs> oh, Zoo with the defensive pillar? Defensive try to kill my opponents with a pillar. Oh right, because you can you can use the pillar on top of that top empire and broken to take a bunch of damage or deal a yeah. bunch of damage. It's simply Ours. not enough to make a difference. Yeah, Orzum coming in for the victory, but wasn't quite enough this time. And it seems like Orzum and Orzum uh, are beating Orzum and Jari in this battle. And yeah, it'll be free too for fire. Still is Pigeon and Santa clawing their way back into this, to this best of seven, and we'll see how the next game can uh, Zoo this, and Drago. Oh, oh, I, this m looks like it will come down to these two bases on the side. Like Pigeon, Pigeon and Santa have taken care of everything they know about. Can they take care of the rest of them quickly enough? They don't have any hidden bases themselves. Like oh. Pigeon and Santa, they. Pigeon has some Empire and Brokens up their sleeve, but they don't have any other ways of getting through here, while Zoo and Drago with a smaller army, if they oh, deal I... the damage in time... Uh, they, they need to go might... for the right targets, though. They no, need to go they're for not going for the right target. No, no, unfortunately, Zoo's target target selection is simply not going to work here to... That, no. Santa Claus able to regroup. Zoo does not have room to get back in here. Yeah, especially with Absolver already set up there. It's going to be very hard to get no. in. Zoo, Zoo had a chance, and they lost it. The window has closed. And it's just how can Drago hold the line, rebuild off of two bases, and uh, zoo off best. of none? He'll do his best. And the Halberd moving in, getting attacked by a Halberd. Santa defending very well. And as long as he has towers, he has hope. Well, that's that's the thing for them. Santa's they've got the towers, they got the shower, they have the absolvers. They are they're doing fine. Oh, going for the for the ancient. Okay, that's a fun one. Drago does, oh. is not. Ooh. No, if Zoo Drago's... gets this, though. If Zoo gets this, that means that Drago and Zoo get basically everything back. They can do whatever they want, pyre wise, for a little while. But Drago already doesn't has come... 280. <laughs> they do. 
Get too much with the pillar. Had a ton of spare pyre and gonna use that to grab some more. Forcing Zoo off of the line. Doesn't even find the next expansion by Santa Claus. Again, this is all just coming down to when does Pigeon when do Pigeon and Santa find the last few expansions from Team Fire? Be too much longer. Ancient killed by Team Ice, and there we go. Ice were starving a bit for pyre. Now they aren't. Uh, they are playing Orzum, so for every Citadel they do have, does give them a bit of pyre income, uh, but doesn't add up as quickly as killing an ancient. Nowhere near. And Zo also doesn't add up to go into this fight, considering how outnumbered they are. And this is leading Team Ice back into Drago's bases. Which is exactly what Team Ice needs to close this game out. And now they're going in. They do find it. They do go for it. Pigeon and Santa are not dissuaded by the high ground. Not dissuaded by the Heaven's Aegis. And that is an evened out... Or not quite evened out series. That is Pigeon and Santa getting back on the board. And As we are... Are we heading to Fool's Bay? Is that it? That's the, we the map We would we're be, yes. That is the last map available in this cycle. Mm. And then the sort of final map, I'm not sure. Well, okay. I guess we'll, whatever we'll, they want. Yeah, exactly. We'll see. We'll see what happens for the last one. Whoever uh, it's going to be free, free. So there's not really someone in advantage there. No one got to choose anything. It is two, three right now. Yep. Ah, Fool's Bay. Well, Fool's Bay is another map that is very different. As you can't, you can't defend as many zones quite as easily. There are two high grounds for their five bases. So that's pretty good. As soon as you get out of those five bases, it gets much harder. Same time, five bases is enough to get your four army and you don't. Yeah, five need... bases is plenty. Yeah, you don't need like, more than that. You, you it's can't. Nice to have more. Yeah, that's that. That is more than enough. Hmm. Vision Santa. Are they going for double Orzum again? Seems like so far they've had a lot of success with their cross play. And uh... a lot more than Aru play. The, the... But even then, it's still come down a lot to where they end up positioning. In a few cases, it's come down a lot to do they make a wrong move and end up walking into a few towers with mm -hmm. supported by absolvers. Zoo and Drago especially have set up. Yeah, or Zoo Drago been, gets an early army lead. Yeah, Zoo has been very good at setting up his absolvers at the right place and getting them very early. We've not seen Zoo so far go for a very early expansion either, so heading for those... Well, those fun type of builds where you proxy a building or two and try to dish damage as fast as possible. That's been their entire game plan. Mm -hmm. Like, I expect that's what they're doing in the tournament, too, was go for proxy buildings, and then if they win, they win, and if they lose, then they use Orzum power to stall forever. Oh, yeah. Stall forever is something they've done a lot. Yeah, I I've talked to Zoo about it. I was like, no, you're supposed to get some... No, but one time I won a game after 45 minutes of stalling and he just sacrificed all he is. So now I'm doing it every single time. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, Zoo has been doing a lot of practicing. They've been doing a ton of practice. Like, they, they have been grinding oh, yeah. this game, trying, like, going, like, I need to set up to be a pro early on. It's like, that's cool, but do have fun with the game. <laughs> like make sure make sure you're enjoying yourself because make sure, make sure your opponents enjoy themselves with you as well. Or yeah, that play with that you too. <laughs> yeah. So it's like you know, and especially if we're finding strategy that's really that's very simple and requires a lot more effort to contend with than it is to execute. Then it's probably gonna get tweaked. So don't get too comfortable. Overall, get... though, it's like no, just have fun. This is this is not this is. In general, don't go esports, but especially with a game this early in development, it's you're supposed to be having fun. You're supposed to be playing this game because it's a fun game to play, which it is a fun game to play. Don't think I need to be the a pro at this. That's not what games are about. Mm. You don't need, you don't need to prove anything to anyone. Just have a good time. If you do want to be a pro at Lawn Darts, though, please go ahead. It'll be very fun to watch and film yourself. Not sure but, you can go pro that. Hmm? I, I don't think so i mean no. you can i mean granted it is a game like playing it properly where you're trying to hit it inside a ring rather than hit right. somebody else yeah it's a lot of like, skill i mean if you aim for other people then it becomes like laser tag mixed with lawn darts and a bit of danger i think that just becomes a duel which is illegal well is it really a duel if both ex no i guess duels you do need both no accept. yeah oh, both accept that's how hmm. duels work 
It's oh, okay. the okay. dueling is generally illegal. I think there might be some jurisdictions where it's not, but don't do that. Like it's not. No, we have but video games for that. We have guard. video games for that. If you want to, if you want to fight your friends, we have. Vid That's what video games are for. For having fun okay. and not poking your friend's eyes out. You don't have to aim for the eyes either. I'm just saying. Okay, but come on, you know this is a dominant strategy. <laughs> Oh, that's for sure. If your opponent yeah, can't sure, see, yeah. they can't play. Yeah, but it's such a small target, though. Well, but okay, yes, it's high risk, high reward. Hmm, yeah. Because if you aim for the arm, then you can't really shoot well. And it's pretty big, so it's a bit easier to, to go for. Mm, maybe. It's still kind of high risk, high reward. Uh, granted, I mean, you could go for the chest and, like, hit them in the gut, and then it's like, now they got to deal with a gut injury. Yeah, but then and that's like, that's a really small target, right? Oh, well, not that small. No, Depends because just hit them is. somewhere in the, in the sternum, like... In the sternum, and that's assuming they're still moving, right? Because we're assuming oh. it's, you know, duel, so you're kind of trying to move around to dodge the lawn darts, not just sitting in place while the lawn darts fall on you and hoping for the best. Oh, in duels, you're allowed to dodge? I thought for sure you weren't. Oh, I guess it depends. Yeah, I guess it depends. Are we talking about, like, are we talking something like a sword fight, or are we talking something like a pistol duel? Because yeah, pistol duel, you typically don't have time forward. to dodge. Like, pistols just don't, they're too fast. But lawn darts are slow enough that you might. Mm. You might be able to dodge it. That might be part of the whole thing. You know, this might be a good video game idea, but do not do this in real life. For God's sakes, do not throw lawn darts at each other in real life. I cannot yeah, emphasize this enough. Yeah, go play Immortal yeah. instead. Play Immortal. Keep your eyes. Yeah, and if you want a key, just, uh, well, type key in the chat. I'm not sure. I haven't looked at chat yet, so. it's cur There's a raffle going on currently. Yes, you can type key in the chat to get to get a key. And that will be oh. sure when you hear this as well, this light delay. Oi. Anyway. And Zoo this whole time has been attacking his opponent. As for Zoo usual, has been, yeah, as 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 is, they've always been setting up a bit of a forward base, pushing from there. Not as forward as last time. Didn't go for the mid ground near the ancient. Going for their for their tower they got for free. I like Same that. time Drago, I, I Drago with the proxy setup or proxy the yeah. nah, proxy bleh. Drago with the sneaky setup going on the sides and such. Yeah. I do like going for that next to the tower. Always have a bit of defense so you can't lose them to crumbs for something coming in right now. Uh, but as you said, Drago going for the counter damage very early. And the Absolver Siege up for Pigeon, able to defend everything. Four Absolvers on his opponent's side. Uh, yeah, no, numbers game so is on Zeus. It's it, oh, the numbers on Zeus side, but happen. the position game is not. I mean, look at where they're set up. Zoo does not yeah. close off anything except one Pyre Camp. Hey, he does get a one Absolver and gets the Pyre oh, as well. Oh, are they going to the second? Okay, Zoo, if they take the second Absolver up, they should actually have it. a chance. They should have gone for it because from there they could have... They could have threatened the expansions. They could have threatened, could have forced Santa. Well, they already did kind of force Santa back, but it certainly could have threatened the rest of this. Four resolvers would have been impossible to contend with with the force that was there at the time. And Drago behind us getting as much damage as he can. Uh, the moats pull back in time, but Drago will get at least one E for extractor out of this. And yeah, slow down the tech a little bit. Yep. There's oh, actually, the there's not much anti air at all for Santa. He wasn't going for anti air at all. They were probably going to rely like, entirely on that... Citadels for that matter. They do have a Castigator coming up, but that's clearly a reaction play. Yeah, because he doesn't have the Reliquary, so he can't go for Zephyrus. At the same time, Zoo going for the straight attack, heading for the tower, and or uh, Ordain Conquest comes down, and the Citadel goes yeah. down as soon as it's 20% under damage when you're playing Orzum. Yeah, that is that is why you're seeing Orzum pop down every once in a while to blow up a tower, is because that's how Orzum works now. So all these, everyone but Drake can take advantage of, well, basically both teams. Can take advantage of this. So towers will not last long in this game, as they haven't been. Well, unless you have an empire and broken. Unless you have an empire and broken, yes. Unless you have the spare pyre to make them super strong, which Drago does, but Drago doesn't have that power. Everyone else does not. <laughs> yeah, because they've been placing towers everywhere to try. Exactly, and they've, been, they've been investing in their future. Yeah, they've been investing I... in their retirement. The more citadels you have, the stronger you get the pyre, and the more pyre you have, the more you can make more citadels. Yeah. Drago, Left alone, you could get a lot. Yeah, Drago very start lead at the very least, uh, getting a lot of damage done on his opponent. So, yeah, even more damage more coming in. Building up a massive Thrum army. Drago is getting more, very committed oh, to this no. harass game. Zo keeping keeping oh, the ground game for them, setting up the Empire and Broken. Santa Claus looking to try to save the day here, but Zo does not care. Now that it's Drago, nothing on Team Ice's side can shoot up. The Thrums are having a field day here. And nothing but the Bastion stopping them. The Absolver is able to deal significant damage in the meantime, softening up all of Team Ice's forces while the Thrums pick them off completely. But that Citadel is enough to hold the line. 
And we've seen this before, haven't we? Attacking into Citadel, this Empire Unbroken. Ugh, sometimes you'll just die no. with all your units. Unfortunately, Zoo did lose it this time. But you look at the army value, it's not too bad. Drago has a decent army at the front. And Zoo is it is positioned at the bottom of the ramp. He found a second Zoo position is, Zoo is denying mining. Like there's there's no way that Santa Claus can actually use this base for the foreseeable future. Unless these Zolvers get taken out. The push is happening now. But taking out the Absolvers without air is a tricky proposition. Sentinels to threaten the Thrums from Santa Claus. So Drago will not have quite as free reign over their opponent's bases as they have had so far. I don't know how much Drago cares, though. They're splitting out their Thrums to try to split up Santa Claus's attention. And a lot of Sentinels coming in from, uh, from Santa, which he does need to do. He needs a lot of Sentinels to help defend everything. Uh, but at least Pigeon on his side is quite happy. He was able to get his base up and defended a bit better, getting a second tower to really defense that position. Fire Seekers coming up to stop those from stem, destroying him. Yeah, the Pigeon Rent at the very least is able to hold stable position. Santa Claus is the primary primary part of that team threatened in the last fight. Yeah. Well, behind all oh, this, the, the big issue is... The, the big rotation issue is coming this. in from Zoo and Drago. Yeah, the big issue is Zoo still hasn't expanded behind any of this. Uh, Drago seems to be going for his third. That's a, that's a good for him. Free bases for Drago and none for Zoo, so the economy will start uh, catching up to him if he doesn't find another base. And as I say that, he goes for the backdoor base. Yeah, Dra okay, well, Zoo has a position to work with. Drago is looking to even out the economy situation as well, having to contend with plenty of stag defense, which does mean there is not a whole lot Drago can do. That's just too much. The Those thrums don't have a, they do not have a prayer of getting through that, and they know mm -hmm. it. Well, at least at least came out with everything. They all survived. Uh, oh, it's the one of the front lines. Oh, gets the tower again. Empire Unbroken comes up, but the, it wasn't even finished. So it won't nah, shoot back to the enemies. Whiffed Empire Unbroken. Uh, Zoo is going to have to contend against two armies, but this time he has the towers defending. He has four absolvers already sieged up. And they have is... they have they have enough for pillar. They have enough for Empire Unbroken. They can hold this. They can hold this no problem. Yep. Even but if that's Sentinels... never been the problem. Santa's not even heading back, so he doesn't have to worry about it either. Yeah. Um, well, that's the thing. is that The problem isn't whether or not Zoo can hold this. The problem is whether or not it matters. <laughs> yeah. well, as we're seeing, oh. Santa Claus rotating over the south side of the map does not care if that area is impenetrable, because if they stop Draco from taking out their expansion, well, that's another expansion for them. That's another expansion that's more power on the eastern side of the map that's threatening what little Zoo does have. So, Zoo, ha forced oh, no. to attack in order to get in this, Tacks into the tower, loses a few units in the process, does take out the tower, though. Yeah, and now Pigeon does not have enough to build another tower. He's only at 50 power, pretty low, considering how much power we've seen uh, get thrown onto those towers. Uh, Drago does mm -hmm. lose his ground army that he had sent to destroy the army in the south, and the Ancient is back. Will anyone go for it? No one's really well positioned. Zoo does have an army nearby, but they've been relying almost entirely on these towers to hold the line. Same time, Drago's force is being stymied by these, by oh. these, well, stymied, being killed by these Sentinels. And Drago simply cannot survive Santa Claus's counter anti-air force, which does open things up for Pigeon and Santa to hold the line a little bit, get that ancient. Time being, Santa and Pigeon Wrench are just finding some position to attack from. Zoo, the first one in here. They can hold in here. They will have a high ground advantage to work with. <laughs> Putting another tower. Yes, yet another tower. Given Zeus' power advantage, that is a solid move. Yeah, Santa Claus point. wants to contend. Pigeon Wrench does have the potential to go for a surround. Are they going for a counter? Are they trying to break down? It looks like they're trying to break down Zeus' entire offensive oh, no. force. Setting up distracting Zeus from the Ancient while Santa goes for it. But Pigeon might just lose his whole army here. There's so many absolvers. They're not sieged up, though. Uh, but that They're might not, not but Pigeons, point. which are sieged up, are not dealing enough damage to actually stop these Zentari. It's coming down entirely. Is this gamble worth a Pigeon losing their army for the Pyre gain from S Santa Claus taking this? If they take it, Zoo winning the fight, going back for the Ancient. Santa does take the Ancient, giving Pigeon a little bit of Pyre to work with, but that's just enough for one tower. Uh, going for that tower might not have been worth it at this point. Behind this, Drago going for a counterattack of his own into Santa and kills the base. And just runs back. He doesn't need to keep going here. Uh, he has invisible... A little bit of scouting. Get, yeah, get a run by just to just to get that extra bit of pressure. Or also scouting. Yeah, just yeah he up. can't really attack into this. 
And oh man, Pigeon's army is back and back, but there's no absolvers here. There's no, no not none of those heavy tech units. In fact, those this push is just not as powerful. How many do they have? They have the resources. They just don't have the production structures. Mm. Oh yeah, you know what? Pigeon wrench. They're they go in, going they tech. Go to tech. No, they're they're going into Angelarum. They're going into air units. That's good. Angelarum will probably deal with this pretty well as most. Oh, okay. If yes. if they build up for it though, that's the thing. They they've gone into it. They haven't set up much, and the Red Seas are out too. Blood plague melting everything. Pigeon wrench has thrown at them. Pillar coming down to try to save the day. Both sides going for it, but Team Ice gets a small win off of theirs. Whether or not it's going to be enough depends on Santa Claus's forces as they as they pull in here. Drago mostly out of position, which does give Zoo very little to work with. The Absolvers stay alive. Everything else is down. But the territory is slightly in favor of Team Fire. They're moving a little bit more forward. Yeah, but Fire doesn't have much of an army. The Absolvers, though... Oh man, those Halberds attack him from the back and try to keep pushing forward, but they get their shots off and those units die before doing much. As long as Santa can keep those Halberds alive, he's in great position, especially with those two towers at the back. Oh wow, unit's almost dead there. Just the shield so left on those plagues. efforts. So many plagues. However, like that, we saw oh, that first fight with the Great Hunt. That was that was what's giving Ooh, the Halberds so much trouble. Oh man, okay. now Kalik also giving the Halberds trouble. Yeah, the slaughter is in Drago's camp now. Orange uh, Fire has the better slaughter of this uh, of this fight. Howlers are great slaughters, but are slightly outranged by those uh, by those act looks. I'm actually and the fight is happening. Drago pushing yeah. forward. Okay, well, Pigeon doesn't have anything to deal with this. Santa does have some thrones, which is doing a lot of work. Howlers being defended well enough by the Centauri, keeping the Absolvers at bay for Pigeon Wrench. Pigeon Wrench able to push forward. Zoo. L Zoo coming around the side to take out Santa Claus as Howlers. That will stop. That will stop the bleeding for Team Fire. The sweep around, wipe out Pitrons and Army. Team Fire has won this fight handily. This expansion wow. is gone. This game is gone. Team Zo and Drago win the break the game weekly show match for this week. Yeah, that was uh, congratulations. That was some games. Yeah, that was some great games. Some some unorthodox strategies from Zoo. And yeah, they pulled it off in the end with uh, the Aklos coming in clutch to destroy their opponents and all those blood plagues, man. That was a lot of blood plagues. So many blood plagues. Yeah, those little red clouds. That was that was death. That's just like <laughs> you. If your units are in there, they just take damage. Yeah, I'm I'm quite happy that we saw a lot of immortals. Right today, we saw all of them being used. Uh, Drago changing every single game. At the end, there Santa and Pigeon felt went back to their origin where they felt the most comfortable and tried to win. Yep. And yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, Pigeon did not have enough production structures to rebuild Absolvers as they lost them and didn't really go for tech off of the Angelarium. So they basically had they had to rely on Centauri, which don't do well against Absolvers. That's the whole point. That's why you build the Absolvers. It's why you have these like the entire army that Zoe built was specifically tailored to deal with what Pigeon Wrench was throwing at them, and Santa was able to come in with extra tech. It just wasn't enough. Yes, yes. It's, it's always the it's always the choice in strategy, right? You got to scout and figure out what you're doing. And yeah, fortunately, sometimes, well, to be fair, Drago did such a great job with his frumps, keeping his opponent busy, and they were never really able to build up to what they wanted. Like they did yeah, Pigeon Wrench, Pigeon Wrench was hit hard by that. Yeah, it's just I honestly, I, part of it looked like Pigeon Wrench working off of the old logic where they could build like, half as many production structures and have as big yeah. of an army. Because, like, units don't build as fast as they used to. Like, yeah, they build half as fast. They build, uh, they build about half as fast as they used to. Well, the armies build half as fast. You build half as many units at a time as they used to. So, if Pigeon Wrench doesn't have, like, two or three of a particular production structure, they're not investing in that production type. And they only had yeah. Legion Hulls. So, they were only building infantry, which Zoo had already dealt with. I'm going to... I'm always surprised at how at how you can stay on one base for so long, and it just works. I'm just, I'm quite happy about that for Zoo as well. Just like That's difference true. in economy, just this difference in economy levels, right? Often you see he has more bases, he's gonna win. No, you can just tech up and come up uh, with well, a victory still. Don't forget, Drago Boy. was expanding a lot around the side and getting sure. plenty of value. Like both that game and game four, I believe, were games where Drago had a massive army advantage for the majority of the game, and then just turn like. They were building this army advantage, but Zoo didn't have much to work with. And Zoo was essentially, Zoo was tanking all the hits 
from Team Ice, while Drago built up a larger and larger army, until finally it was big enough that regardless of Zoo's army, Drago could steamroll. We yeah. saw that this game, we saw that, I believe, Game 4, we saw that one we saw think, a few Game times. 2 as well. So every, yeah, I think it was, a lot. it was a very frequent strategy between the two players, was Zoo going for, Zoo playing tank, and Drago playing DPS. Yep. Just distract the opponent while you just build up the biggest army possible and destroy them afterwards. Like, oh yeah, yeah, good yeah, strategy. Exactly. Yeah. So it worked. It worked beautifully for them. They got a win four and two. Good job to them. And we really got to see a lot of what Orison currently plays as. We did not see much of that during the tournament last week, but we got a crash course today. Oh boy, mm. did we. <laughs> oh boy. Can't wait for more of it. And yeah. <laughs> All right, so that is going to be it for this. Thank you all of you for tuning in. Thanks to Zoo, P Pigeon, Santa, and Drago for joining us for the show match because we normally have Break the Game weekly tournaments every week and you can join the Discord, which I'll link in the chat to get into those. But sometimes we don't have as many signups, which leads to things like this, where we have a nice little show match just showing off the players because ultimately that's what the Break the Game weekly is for. It's to test the game, it's to really push strategies in a competitive environment, in a friendly competitive environment, and to provide entertainment for all of you. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you, ZK, for helping me to with the commentary. And thank you all of you for watching. Do you have anything to plug? No, I'm good. All, all right, well, see you next time. That's that. Have a good night, everyone.